Hello, this is Steve Geisher bringing you another Parts Now Tech Tip. With that, I want to talk about something called the stop test. Stop test is something that is commonly forgotten about in the industry. For those of you who have learned it, stop test, halfway test, um, checking for image defects type of issues. For those of you who have not heard of this before, it is a great test for being able to isolate where is an image defect coming from. The primary focus of this test tends to be between the toner cartridge and the transfer section. In other words, is the image defect, whether that image defect inside here is repeating marks on the page, fuzziness to the image, uh, gray streaks or different you know, types of issues, is it coming from the toner cartridge drum, the toner cartridge unit, or is it being messed up when it transfers from the cartridge drum down into the piece of paper as it's going through? So to isolate which? A lot of times what people do in the industry is they take out the toner cartridge, they get another one, pull the seal, put it inside, did my image defect to go away. That's a very effective test. The problem is if my toner cartridge doesn't fix it, I now have an open toner cartridge exposed to the elements. I put it in the shelf someplace. If I'm not using them real frequently, it's sitting there oxidizing and the cartridge is kind of wearing out without using up any toner. So how do I run this test? That's what I want to run through and discuss how do we do a stop test? Um, and can we do stop tests in other areas too? So let's get into this. What I've got is my P3015 here, using this for example. What a lot of people will do is they set up a test to the menus, they tell it to print, they listen to the machine, listen to it pick up, and then they kind of guess as to when the paper is about halfway through the imaging process and they pop open the door. And at that point in time, they go, hey, you know, we've, we either got it or we didn't. I should have opened it sooner or later. There's an easier way of doing this. I'm going to pull a piece of paper out of my cassette tray here, and, but I'm not going to close my tray two. I'm just going to kind of leave it partially open here so it doesn't want to pull from tray two. Instead, I'm going to open up my MP tray or tray two and put a piece of paper here. And when I tell it to run a test, the machine is going to say, hey, I've got paper on tray one. I should grab that first, or it's going to say, Gee, tray two is open, but I see this paper on tray one. Do you want me to use that instead? Yes, I do. Press the button and away it goes. So either way. So to do our test here, I'm going to kind of stand up. Let's take a look. The idea is I want to run the paper about three quarters of the way through, and then I want to pop open the door so we can take a look at the image inside. This way, when I see the paper feed, I know how far it's gone in. Depending upon the paper path, you may want to wait until just after it's gone inside or even stop it sooner. Your choice. So we're going to look at the control panel here. If you can kind of see that, it's a little bit tough, I know. Zoom in just a little bit and bring it down here. And as we're taking a look at our control panel, I'm going to go through. It tells me tray two is open. I say I don't care. And I'm going to go down to the information menu. So at the information menu here, click on OK. I usually print the configuration page. You can choose whichever one that you want. You can even send a print job to it of where you're having the image defects. You know, print out a gray page, print out a black page, print out your know, pure white page, whatever you want, and run your test. So when I press this button, it's going to start running the test. So I'm now going to back us up a little bit so we can take, at, take a look at what we're doing here. So I've got my printer kind of set to go, and when I press the button, I need to be ready to open up the door, because as soon as this goes in, it will happen quickly. Press the button to print. Watch the paper feed in. Stop it. Okay, so I've stopped the machine when I opened up the door. I, trailing edge is right here on this particular machine. There we go. And now I can take a look inside the printer. And as we look inside here, Pulling out my toner cartridge, I can now see the image defect or the image that's on the paper there. So here I am looking inside. Do you see the print in there? If this is good enough, I look inside and say, hey, there's my image defect. You know, this is helping me know I caught it. Okay, this is good. Or if I don't see it real well, what I can also do is take this little green tab here, lift this up, and then move the paper forward and then pull it back out. Hopefully I don't smear my image here. I didn't do a very good job at that. But I can take a look and see what does my image look like here now that I've got it pulled out. So as you kind of take a look at my image, do I see my image defect in here? Notice I only caught, caught the top corner of the page or the top 
one quarter. I could run it further through if I wanted to. More print in the page. Do I see it? So this may take you more than one try in order to get your image defect to show up. So do I see it here? If I do see it here, my next question is, is it also on the image drum? So kind of backing up the printer here just a little bit. I can now take a look at my toner cartridge drum. And I'm going to bring that out here. A little tough to see, but if we take a look here, you can kind of see that I've got some image on the drum. See right down the center here? That one's pretty bold if I get the angle right here off of the light that's bouncing from it. But do I see an image defect in my print here? If I don't see it on my drum, and I may have to try two, three, four, five, six times, in order to see if I can catch it on the drum because it's only a short little area here. If I don't see it there, but I do see it on the media, that tells me my image is being created correctly on the cartridge. It's not transferring correctly down to the page. I'm starting to look at, is there a problem with the paper path? Is there a problem with my transfer roller? Is it getting old? Is it getting whitish in color? Where it's starting to cause type of issues. Maybe I need to replace that. Maybe there's other issues going on with high voltage charges. If I do see the image defect in my toner cartridge drum, I'm saying, well, maybe it's a toner cartridge problem. I can order another cartridge. I can install it, see if it fixes it. Could be that there's other issues. My laser scanner, which is up on top, maybe it's not writing correctly. Maybe there's high voltage charges or contact that's not set right. So you're getting the general concept of how things work here as to how we would go about troubleshooting, but it helps us to isolate through here. So, what else can I do in a, in a stop test? We've looked at the image process. How do I stop it halfway through? Look at the media. By the way, um, if you haven't done this before, you might want to, I might suggest, you might want to shut off the power as you're doing this. So turn off the power, pull the plug, probably a good practice to have. The other thing that we can do as we're running a, a, uh, an image defect, you know, stop test through here. Let's say I run it through, I look at the media and I go, there's no image defect on there. So where is it coming from? Well, maybe it's coming from my fusing section in the back. Can I open up the back door? Can I run it partway through here, part halfway through the fuser, look at it and go, oh, look, I've got an image defect here. But when I look in the machine here, I don't have an image defect. Is that a clue? You betcha it is. Can I also run it through the delivery or through the duplex and do some of the tests there? Yes, this is logically helping us to isolate where's the problem coming from. So I went from, could be a toner cartridge, let's just throw one in, to where's it really coming from first? And let's troubleshoot it down to that level. And then let's address the, the issue if we can identify it best we can. So do you see where a stop test can really come in handy here? So once again, setting up my machine, I suggest you pull out your cassette tray. You may have to pull out more than one down below so it doesn't pull from them. Put it on your Tray one, bypass tray, MP tray, whichever you call it here. When you see the trailing edge go in, pop open the door, turn off the power, unplug it, go through your process and look at the image. Again, you may have to have multiple tries to do this right. So don't be afraid of this. In fact, my suggestion is if you've never done this before, um, go play with the machine and take a look at the image on the drum. Take a look at the image on the paper, you know, just to get familiar with it. Should also note some machines have a nice black print that's left on the drum and a nice black print that's on the paper. Some machines have a really light print. I was doing this earlier on an, an HP LaserJet M506. The print is extremely light on the drum and light on the paper. It's the way it's supposed to be that way, but it really makes it tough to troubleshoot that way because different machines have different coverages, different boldness and so on. Getting the concept here. So go play with it a little bit and learn how to do that. So hopefully this will be another good testing tool out there when you're doing this or you have to troubleshoot an image defect and trying to figure out what to do next. So with that, this is Steve Geishert with another Parts Now Tech Tip.